Welcome to the Intelligent Power Management and the Power Center of Excellence. Good afternoon, my name is Clint Pingleton and I'm the Manager of Business Development and Power Operations here in Plano. Welcome. Hold all your questions till the end, please. Okay, you're gonna have a lot, I can tell. Uh, the uh, title of my presentation is The Elephant in the Room. And the elephant in the room is, for most enterprises globally, is the lack of actionable intelligence. What we've found in our experience in dealing with our customers globally is more often than not, they make decisions based on events rather than actionable intelligence driven by analysis. Example is, uh, something goes wrong at the site, a high temperature alarm is triggered, or a door is open, it triggers an event, and they end up sending a technician to the site to qualify what it is. An example in an HVAC is a gentleman who shows up on site is not the HVAC technician. So they have to call another trouble ticket in, an HVAC technician shows up and fixes the problem. So what we try to do is to provide analysis and information for our customers to mitigate some of those decisions. In most corporations, especially enterprise customers in the telecommunications market, are siloed. So you have your operations folks, you have your construction folks, you have your green team and your power team. You know, organizations are kind of built that way. So what we try to do is drive actionable intelligence that spreads across all those different silos so all organizations can make business decisions. So I'm going to show you a few examples of what I'm talking about. This is a particular site in one of the customers we monitor today. As you can see, this site is temperature before and temperature after we install the IPM solution. So you can see over here in the red, the red is outdoor temperature. The blue, green, and orange is different temperature set points in this particular site. As you can see, for a block of about 12 hours a day, so for this case, it's from noon until midnight, there's a 10 degree difference in temperature between uh, the two temperature set points in the shelter. The next day, it does the same thing. The next day, it does the same thing. But if you look at the day, it's different. The energy consumption of the blue, or correction, the temperature of the blue is different. They're not quite the same. So what we hyper-focused on is driving efficiencies in the, how the site operates so we can look for cost-producing anomalies. So before and after. What's the big difference? It's steady. It's very, very consistent, right? The only thing that adjusts is outdoor temperature, whereas the indoor temperature stays very consistent. So what this allows us to do is rapidly pick out anomalies in the way the site operates. So an example of this is over here on the right. You can see this line right here. This is basically a CDZ, CD, uh, CDD of a day, cooling degree days of how a site operates. And this gold is the kind of the, the HVAC consumption based on certain points in time. So it's pretty consistent of following this line. But all of a sudden, out of the blue, for this particular site, energy spike from roughly 70 kilowatt hours up to 112 kilowatt hours. A significant increase in energy consumption. That equates to about $5 a day additional energy consumption. Because no alarm thresholds were met, no temperature alarms, no power outage alarms were met, nothing is sent back to the NOC. What we actually did through analysis was figured out that this particular site had an ambient air economizer built into the HVAC system. So we concluded that the humidity was rising in the site, it was matching the outdoor humidity, energy consumption was rising, but the temperature of the shelter stayed consistent because it was still being mechanically chilled by the air conditioner. So what our assumption was, was the actual door on the economizer was stuck open. So we called in the local market, we called in a trouble ticket, and told them exactly what part to bring out for that particular HVAC model, and it was fixed in 30 minutes. So this is one of those anomalies that never would have been picked up under the traditional mode of operation. So actionable intelligence saved this customer $5 a day. Next one, this is additional consistencies. So you can see the temperature stays steady, roughly at 77 degrees F or 25 degrees C. The only thing that fluctuates is outdoor temperature. And if you look down here, of the actual temperature set point, they cool these shelters based on the lead acid batteries. So the optimal operating temperature is 25 degrees C or 77 degrees F. If you look at that temperature, 77.4 all the way down, and it's about a half a uh, uh, one-tenth of a 0.5% difference between the highest and the lowest. So we stay very consistent. And over here is taking the same data 
and putting it into a tree map or heat map format. So this block represents one hour block of time for this particular site. The site temperature before and how it's being collected and run, very inefficient all over the map. And this is after, very consistent. In this case, the kind of the, the bright red and orange is it's too hot. The blue is colder than it should be or cooler than nominal temperature. And the greenish yellow color in the middle is nominal. So if you look over to the left, all over the map, very inconsistent. So you couldn't pick out anomalies based on this. This is more in line with external temperature. And we take that same data and we roll it up into an enterprise level. So this is 5,000 sites we're monitoring and we're able to pick out quickly the anomalies associated with these customer sites. So the, this is each block represent one site and the uh, green kind of bright green is operating in nominal parameters. The dark green is there's anomaly associated with that site and the red is it's actually something problem with that site. So all we have to do is highlight over the red site and we can drill down into that data and identify exactly what's wrong with that site with some margin of error. And from that, we can automatically issue a trouble ticket or contact the vendor who's responsible for that particular site. And we can sort this based on uh, location, region, utility provider, HVAC, brand, size, who services that particular site, who services that particular piece of equipment, it doesn't matter. This is uh, from a temperature point of view, so the bright red is a problem site. It is hotter than it should be in that particular site. Uh, the dark red is an anomaly, so it's a little bit out of operational parameters. And the black means it's nominal, and the blue means it's too cold. So in this particular case, we look at the dark red and the blue. The reason we look at the blue, it more than likely means that the air conditioner is overperforming and cooling the site more than it should be. So it's costing additional energy consumption. And the red in this case probably indicates is the HVAC is not performing to operational standards or it's defective. So we're able to dive into that data real quick. And again, we can sort by these parameters over here. I mean, it's unlimited how we can sort based on the information we collect. This particular presentation here focuses primarily on environmental, but we can do a deep dive into anything, whether it be generator management, uh, RAN equipment, uh, revenue generating equipment versus non-revenue generating equipment, diesel generators, fuel cells. We're completely integrated with rely on fuel cells today, which we have one over there on the other side. And here's an example of generator analytics. So this is actually a snapshot of FEMA's view using TreeMap and information collected. And the data up here kind of breaks down what each little block means. And again, each block size represents the importance of that particular site, or in this case, a generator. Yellow means it's available. Purple means it's in transit. Green means it's installed and operational. Uh, red means it's failed and gray is not applicable to this particular chart. So this is a national view of the generator management for FEMA. And if you look right here in the red, Essex, this is in New Jersey, post Hurricane Sandy. So you can clearly tell these are the sites, the generators that were wiped out by Hurricane Sandy. So, or Superstorm Sandy. So it clearly indicates that something's not right with these sites. So all we have to do is do a, click on the site, for example, site 155, and we can do a deep dive into that particular site to figure out what possibly could potentially be wrong. So this takes an enterprise view of the data collected from each individual site so we can let our customers know how inefficiently or efficiently their site is working. So the key thing is for us is to drive efficiencies. And when we drive efficiencies, it results in this. What we've learned so far is we've reduced a 98% reduction in unrealized equipment malfunction. From our sites, we found HVACs that were malfunctioning the customer didn't know about, dehydrators that were malfunctioning the customers didn't know about, public utility equipment that's on site, customers didn't know it was pulling energy, legacy equipment that is 20 years old, that has been, all the connections were unplugged, but the system was still turned on consuming energy. So we reduced unrealized equipment malfunction and energy generation by 98%. Uh, high alarm temperature service calls, more often than not, high temp alarms or false alarms. So we reduce those by 90%. Backup energy failures, where we find out one particular customer, we went out in January, we went out again in uh, September, and the generator didn't start once, not a single time. It's the fuel 
uh, reading is still the same on the gas, on the gas meter where it was back in January. So we proactively can start and stop generators, or we can tell them at an enterprise level when the last time the generator was, more, a maintenance was performed on it, and did the maintenance improve the efficiency of the generator. And a big one we use is demand and time of use mitigation. What we found in our analysis is it doesn't matter if it's two brand new air conditioners off the shelf, if you install them on a site, one is going to perform more efficiently than the other. It's just, it's just the nature of the way it works. It's location in the shelter, or it just, it's just a more efficient HVAC. So certain parts of the country where they have demand rates or time of use rates, where it spikes up to maybe 35 or 40 cents in the afternoon from noon to 6 p.m., then at night it's 13 cents flat for kilowatt hours. What we do during that block of time is we run the most energy efficient HVAC so it drives down energy cost. Then those off-peak hours when energy is cheaper, we run the less efficient HVAC so they balance the function of the HVAC systems. Then overall, our reduction for non-revenue generating equipment or non-rent equipment, our kind of our flat line deduction we do of every site we've assessed has been typically between 20 and 25 percent energy reduction or operational cost reduction. And from a cell site perspective, the average savings is right around $2,000 per year. And that's all we're doing is layering in our technology with existing equipment on site. No other special fancy equipment other than our one little uh, intelligent power management device to maximize the efficiency of the uh, actual site. So in conclusion, actionable intelligence drives radical efficiency. And it leads to delivered energy savings and operational reduction. Now, for our customers, what we're finding out is the more sites we layer our stuff into and we integrate with, the more issues we find and we come around, that come along that we didn't know what we even think of what exists and they didn't think would exist in their, in their network and their infrastructure. So as we go along this process, we're finding more and more ways to save our customers money. All right, thank you for your time.